So today Cody is raking with his Farmall H that he is mostly restored. And he is using a old David Bradley rake. The reason I'm not up here is because the uh, 460's oil pressure was going wonky yesterday. Uh, usually rides right around 45 and after I mowed this section up here I could see that it dropped down to 20 and then it eventually dropped to 10 and I made the decision to drop the mower and drive it home. And by the time I got home it was slightly overheating so I was glad I made the choice. So until we figure out what's going on with that, which I think it doesn't sound like an oil pump. We think it's just a gasket on the um, oil filter housing. So, but of course it's a holiday weekend. Today's Sunday, tomorrow's Labor Day. So where are you gonna find it? But Cody's got this with his H. That tractor's been very reliable. And this David Bradley rake is fantastic. I would like to find another one just like it. It's worlds better than the international rake we had. And I say had because I blew up that PTO shaft and not the PTO shaft, but the little shaft, the bearing from the gearbox to the chain. So yeah, look at all this great hay. Really nice cut for second cut. Whew. When all else fails, the H prevails. <laughs> Look at that. So we noticed that H is geared higher. So every once in a while, we have to stop and let it chew up a chunk. So those are the thumbs of the knotters are working. As you can see, we have our New Holland Hayliner 69 back. I will show you when we get home what was broken on it. But yeah, the flywheel is where it belongs. Let's uh, really hope it stays that way. But yeah, beautiful bales. Look at that. Gorgeous hay. Another one. I'm a happy, happy, happy girl. It picked up a big clump, so Code's putting it in neutral so it can swallow that. Chomped it right up. What an awesome little baler. Keep that flywheel. <laughs> Alright, I don't want to brag about it too much. It might fly off again. care how new your stuff is it is still really really cool to see these old tractors out in the field still working after all those years a tractor right there was built during World War II look at it and all the parts that are on it are really original parts um, minus you know filters and little wearable parts like that but such a cool sight to see and this is even cooler hi guys okay so a couple days have gone by since the rest of this video but I thought I would take a couple minutes to bring you out here and show you really quickly um, what had gone wrong with the New Holland 69 Hayliner um, if you recall earlier in the year I was bailing hay with it and um, this here flywheel decided to leave the chat. And so it uh, it broke off and went rolling down the hill. We we're very fortunate that nobody got hurt and there was very, very minor damage to a shed that I still hope I get to help fix if it isn't fixed already. <laughs> but anyways, um, so I'm gonna show you the parts that were um, broken on it so that you can see what happened because we were all um, 
very puzzled. I mean, nobody had ever seen that happen before. Um, I hope I never see it happen again, but now I know what to watch for. So hang on. Okay, so this right here is, whoops, this right here is the cap that goes to the gearbox from the flywheel. Uh, as you can see, there's a grease uh, start there. And uh, yeah, it's just basically made out of cast steel. Um, and here is a ring and it's supposed to fit. Let's see if I can show you here. There's, it's hard to see with the sun glare. It's supposed to fit there evenly. So you can see how much room there is and how much wear there is along the edge of that. That's all worn down. I'm gonna show you as best as I can. So here's the cap in the same position and see if you can see a difference in the width. Do you see the difference? This literally has a bevel and there's no bevel left here. See the difference? Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I estimate about somewhere between a quarter and half an inch missing off of this piece. And so, um, you know, they were thinking that potentially this ring here had looked like it had some um, welding done to it at one point, not by us, but by somebody. And this piece had caused some irregular wear of this cap. And when that happened, it allowed the flywheel to have play and the amount of that stress just caused it to <laughs> exit stage left. Um, so the thing to watch for, because you don't know if it's ever gonna happen again on this particular machine, because of that ring there, um, is play. And as you can see, I'm actually rocking the whole baler, but there's no play here in the flywheel. So that is excellent and wonderful to see. Um, yeah, we actually had to get this PTO shaft off of an international baler at a parts graveyard um, because our PTO shaft had uh, literally snapped. And uh, so they're very hard to find. So we had to go source a used part. Uh, but yeah, um, she's all back together and very, very happy. One of these days we'll get that replacement guard and get whoever that is his name off the baler because she's ours now. But hopefully this is now a bulletproof baler very, very happy with the bales that we got out of it. I still have to clean this bale out of it because I just haven't gotten that far yet, but beautiful bales. So yeah, super, super pleased and happy to have the Hayliner back. This is a great old baler. Uh, they really don't make them much different anymore. The Nodder systems are pretty much exactly the same. The technology is pretty much unchanged. Um, you know, you just get upgraded parts and you know, it's about the same. To get a baler like this nowadays, you're looking at $30,000 maybe if you buy them brand new. So we're real happy to have the old girl back. This baler is an International 440 and we picked it up to be a replacement for the 69. Um, we bought it with the understanding that it didn't tie on the left side and uh, brought it home and I said it might be the knives. We changed the knives, which the price of knives is about ridiculous. I mean, they're this big and they're $30 a piece. It's ridiculous. <laughs> what isn't ridiculous these days? Anyhow, um, so the Nodder system is just a wee bit different here. I mean, they operate the same functionally. They just look a hair different. I have it for sale under the, you know, assumption that it doesn't tie on one side. However, I think I might putz with it a little bit. Um, it could be a tension issue or the wiper on the bottom of the knotters. Let me know down below in the comment section if you would like to see a breakdown of that. I am by no means an expert. I'm gonna put that out there right now. In fact, I have required the most amount of help. <laughs> However, with some really great mentors and some people that are very well versed in the field, and of course the mechanics that have worked on this, I've acquired some knowledge. And if you guys would like to know some of the things that I've learned through our trials and tribulations this year, um, just let me know down below because I'll share what I know, which 
is probably still minuscule in the amount of things that could go wrong with these knotters, but I've learned and I'm absorbing. Also, if you have any tips or pointers that may help, leave those down below too, because my goal, because you see now that the H is able to run the 69, I'm hoping that I can get my 460 to run the 440. And that would be awesome because then we could literally double our, you know, our efforts and, and get twice as much done at one time. So while this is still for sale, if you need a you know, project failure, let me know. <laughs> but um, while it is still for sale, I'm going to try to get it working. Because even if I do end up selling it, if it's working, it'll be worth more than if it's not. So, so there we are. Um, don't mind my overgrown weeds in my equipment parking pad, which used to be my riding arena. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it was stretched out over several days, of course, showing different struggles. But uh, this tractor of my son's has really pulled through. It has been an awesome investment. I'm so proud of him for restoring it and repairing it and getting it going. I can't wait to see him finish the restoration on this, which he should do this winter. And I'll make sure to add video footage of that as well. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share. And if you would like to see what I know, which is limited, but what I know about nodders <laughs> from everything I've learned this year and last, drop it in the comments below. In the meantime, I hope you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye.